Okay, so you've completed the cell size lab and you have no idea what to do with the data. I've opened up Google Slides and I've set up two data tables that match the headings that we need for this lab. And I've also put the four cube side lengths in. Now I'm going to do some explanation of how we uh, go through the data, but I'm also going to explain how to do some formatting and tricks inside of Google Sheets as well. So the first thing is making this look nice because this is just painful to look at. Um, I'm going to highlight uh, basically all of it and I'm gonna click on format and go to text wrapping and click on wrap that's just gonna space this out a little bit nicer uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make these bold because that makes me happy and there you go now what else we can do is highlight the columns and if you double click on this it'll automatically space it to be the minimum spacing that it needs um, I'm actually gonna go in and manually space them just a little bit so it's not quite so crowded while I have this highlighted, I'm also going to go ahead and center align it. Now, because these are data tables, they should probably have borders. So I'm going to add some borders. And now we have two beautiful data tables. In terms of the formulas that we'll need, um, as we look through this, you'll see that basically we're, we're not collecting that much data. And a lot of these calculations don't even require the collection of any data. For instance, calculating the surface area of a cube, we already have the side length of the cube. So we know that the length, the width, the depth is all the same for each of these four cubes. So what I'm going to do is click here and I'm going to type equals, which establishes that we're doing a formula. And the formula for, si uh, for the surface area of a cube is six sides to a cube multiplied by the length, so I click here, and that puts that value in, that's the uh, location of the cell I clicked on, uh, and I multiply that by the width, which is the same thing. So I click that again, and I hit enter, and there you have your surface area. For volume, I'm gonna press equals to do a formula. I'm gonna click the length here, and I'm gonna cube that, because volume is length times width times height cubed. So that's raised to the third power. Press enter. Now you have your value. To get the surface area to volume ratio, I'm going to do equals. Um, surface area to volume is equal to surface area divided by volume. So I'm going to click surface area. I'm going to do a slash for divide and click volume. Press enter. Now I have my surface area to volume ratio. So there's 12 units of surface area per unit of volume. The time for diffusion is, is a value measured in the lab, and the diffusion distance is also a value measured in the lab. That's our uh, distance into the potato that the iodine has diffused. Our diffusion rate is going to be equal to the diffusion distance, the cell, divided by the total time here. And even though I don't have values here, I can still set this up. Now when I hit enter, it's going to yell at me because I'm technically dividing by zero because we don't have a time, but that'll go away as soon as we input this. So if we, uh, let's say we measured a one millimeter diffusion distance, and let's say that took place over uh, 25 minutes, then we now have a diffusion rate of 0 0.04. Um, we want to do, I'm going to get rid of those values since we made those up. We want to do um, the same thing for all four of our cubes, but I don't want to have to uh, retype all of those formulas again and again and again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is highlight all of these, and I'm going to go to this little square in the bottom right corner, and I'm going to drag it down. And you, and you could actually do that for individual columns, but it's easier just to grab everything and drag it all down. And again, it's going to stop yelling at me about the divide by zero as soon as I put in data for this. So our first data table is done. We're good to go. Our second one is going to have us do essentially the same thing. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, be needing to convert things over to millimeters. So our, our original side length was based on centimeters. So to convert to millimeters, I'm just going to press equals, take my distance or my length in centimeters, and multiply that by 10. Uh, for my cube volume, now in millimeters cubed rather than centimeters. So I'm going to take my new cube length in millimeters and raise that to the third power. Press enter. 
for the diffusion distance into the cube, that is again, that's from here, that's our measured value that we need to input. Um, for our length of the cell in which no diffusion occurred, that's the portion of the cell inside the middle where diffusion did not occur. To show you what I mean by that, I'm just going to grab another slide here and just kind of graphically show you what I mean. So if we have our chunk of potato here, um, you're going to see iodine diffusing into all sides of this. So this is a cross section of my potato and it's going to look something like this. In the middle you're left with a bit of potato that has not had any diffusion occur. That's what this length is referring to. It's referring to the length across this inner portion of the potato. And we can get that through a calculation. We don't actually have to measure it at all. Because we know the total length of the potato and we know the length of the diffusion into the potato, we can find the remaining length of this interior portion by taking the total length and subtracting it by this distance, which we measured, and this distance, which is the same as that distance. So if we take the total length um, and subtract from that two times our diffusion distance, that should leave you with the length of the undiffused portion of the potato. So if I jump back here, I can set that up as a formula where I have that equal to the total length of the potato minus two times the diffusion distance into the cell. Okay. Right now it's saying that that's 5 because it's saying we don't have any diffusion distance. So I'm just going to say that we have a diffusion distance of 1 millimeter just for the sake of showing you the calculation. And, and here you can see the interior portion then is 3 because this is 1, this is 3, this is 1 for a total of 5 across. For the volume of the cell in which no diffusion occurred, that's just the volume of this interior portion. So if I take this length and I cube that, I'm left with a volume of 27. So uh, out of the total cubic volume of 125 millimeters cubed, we have a volume of 27 remaining in the middle using this example data. Therefore, we can find the volume of the cell in which diffusion has occurred. And this was kind of the goal all along, to find this value. The reason why it's a difficult value to find, and we have to do this roundabout way of doing it, is because the volume that we're looking for is the volume of all this stuff on the outside of our cube, all the way around, you know, in three different directions. It's this, this weird shape. It's, uh, it's the shell around the inner part of the potato. That's a hard volume for us to just find through standard measurement and rulers and things. And so we have to do this math. And the math for this is just that it's the total volume of the overall potato cell minus the volume we just calculated of that remaining bit in the middle. Because if you take the total volume and you subtract out the part that does not have any iodine diffused into it, then logically you're left with the volume that does have iodine diffused into it. So I hit enter. Now I want the percent of the total volume that had diffusion, so I'm just going to take this uh, amount that has diffusion and, so, and divide that by the total cubic volume, and I get about 78.4%. Of course it says 0.784%, uh, and that uh, it says actually it doesn't say percent at all. This bothers me, so I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to click on uh, this button up here that says Format as Percent. Just as a note for the rest of this, if you wanted this to be standardized with uh, the number of decimal places, I could highlight all of this, and then these buttons here actually adjust the number of decimal places. So if we wanted to get crazy, we could. We probably don't want to, though. So I'm going to back this down to just have one decimal place. There are, of course, times when you should care about things like significant figures. This is not one of them, but we don't want to get too crazy or careless with our numbers. Uh, so now I have all of this. I can go ahead and I can drag this down. The only thing I would want to be wary of is that these four values are different measured values. So if they do change, then you need to adjust these accordingly to the actual diffusion distances that we uh, had measured up here. But when we look at this, if we assume that there is a standard distance of diffusion that has occurred, uh, you'll notice that as we increase the cube side length, as our cell here increases in side length, 
the volume just increases exponentially. Um, of course, actually exponentially because it's it's uh, side length to the third power, and so we end up going from 125 all the way up to 27,000. Now, likewise, the volume of the cell in which diffusion occurred also increases pretty substantially. We go from 98 all the way up to 5,048, but it does not increase nearly as quickly as the overall cube volume did. And for that reason, when you look over here at our efficiency, you see that our efficiency is getting less and less and less, which is the whole point of this lab, to show us that if we have actual real-world cells that are larger and larger and larger, it puts more and more of a strain on that organism to ensure that things like nutrients and other ne needed materials are able to get to all portions of the cell that might need it, because as that cell gets larger and larger and larger, it's a much larger volume over which those nutrients would need to traverse in order to get to whatever organelles or cell parts that they need to get to. And so when you look at something like a blue whale, while at first it might stand to reason that they must have giant cells compared to a person, in reality, they don't. And because, or the reason why, is because if they had these giant, giant cells, they would not be able to efficiently diffuse nutrients and needed supplies to all portions of those cells. So instead of being made out of giant cells, large animals are just made out of more small cells, which ensures that there's plenty of surface area over which nutrients can be entering and exiting the cell um, and keeps everything much, much more efficient. So once you've done this, you should have two nice data tables that would be filled in, of course, with your own laboratory experimental data. Um, and the goal then for this lab, we're going to keep it simple, is to get a nice graph that shows the comparison of the percent efficiency uh, related to the increasing side length of your uh, cube. And that's what you should do.